Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector. And I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. This is the Ready, Set, Go preview show. It is the show that we do every single week where we spend some time talking about all of the content that is going to be released from the channel over the course of the week. We also give away some cool stuff, and then we spend a little time talking about some current events and things like that. And I have to tell you guys that there are some weeks where I struggle. I struggle to figure out what it is that we are going to talk about. And there are some weeks like this week where it is extremely easy to figure out what we're going to talk about because there is so much crazy stuff happening in the news. Uh, and as I was doing a little bit of a last minute show prep, some stuff actually continued to flow into the channel uh, via a couple of people out there in the uh, in the comic book community. And I am very thankful for all those individuals that feed me information on a regular and ongoing basis. But we have, uh, I think, a good topic that we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to get into it uh, in just a couple of moments. I want to say hello to a couple of people. Uh, we're going to start off with Felix. Felix was first in the chat. It is good to see you, my friend. I'm glad that you were able to make it. And he says, hello, anybody here? There are quite a few people here. I, I don't think that there were many here when you first popped into the chat, but there's quite a few people here now. So it's good to see you. Danny Costa is in the house. IMJ is here. It is good to see you, my friend. Uh, scrolling through the chat here. Who else is here? Chris Bigger is in the house. Joe is here. Christopher Biggs is here. Uh, Briggs, sorry about that. Chris Barrett is in the house. We are full up on Chris's today. Uh, who else is here scrolling through Wayne McDonald, my Canadian brother. How you doing, my friend? <laughs> uh, let's see who else do we have here? Uh, scrolling through Rush, another Canadian. It is good to see you, my friend. Um, it looks like you guys were having a good conversation. Lewis is here. Who else is here? Comics and statues is in the house. Ramos is in the house. XN is in the house. Mushir is here. Mushir, it's, it is good to see you, my friend. We will have a uh, modified unboxing from Mushir at the end of this live stream. So definitely stay tuned for that. Todd, how you doing? It is good to see you. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get things started. Uh, now that I've said hello and greetings and salutations to the comic book soldiers. Uh, <laughs> somebody asked me about that term this week in the comments, and uh, I don't know that I've ever really defined it. Um, you know, the, the channel to some degree is, is like the intersection of comics and fitness, if you will, because those are two things that I'm, you know, passionate about or have been passionate about at various points in my life. And so the, the term comic soldiers is, is a reflection of that intersection. There are a lot of people out there that are into comics that are also into fitness as well. And, and I, I like the term comic soldiers because we are always out there talking about the hunt, right? We're always hunting for the next book, the next 50 cent book, the next grail, the next key, the next local comic shop, right? We're going to hit this place, hit that place. It is a hunt, right? And, and I like the term soldier because we're out there hunting, right? We're out there, you know, in, in the weeds, we're doing the work that has to be done for the love of the hobby. And so that the, the term comic soldiers, I, I think is a, is a very fitting uh, term. And I mean, let's be honest, you, you have to be somewhat swole to lift these long boxes and short boxes as many times as we do over the course of a day. So, <laughs> so that's kind of where the term uh, comes from. Uh, but as a reminder, before we get into this thing, if you are watching this now or on the replay and you have yet to subscribe to the channel, I definitely want to encourage you to do so, so that you can stay abreast of all the content that we release on a weekly basis. And I think we release some pretty good stuff. I think we had a, a good week this week, lots of live streams and lots of, uh, lots of pre-recorded videos that were released that I think in some ways were thought provoking, especially that one that I released on Friday about uh, your younger self viewing your current collection. There was a lot of, uh, lot, I think a lot of good insight and a lot of feedback on that one. So uh, Kyler, thank you very much for that. We're going to unhide that. I don't know why that was uh, hidden. So we're going to unhide that. But uh, <laughs> Reggie Craven off Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Collector or addiction? Ooh, ooh, I've actually been noodling that topic. I have actually been noodling that one. Um, yeah, so we I don't know if I'm going to do it um, because I don't want anyone to uh, think that I'm uh, joking about 
addiction, like real addiction, you know? And so I've been debating whether I do that one and whether that one could be received the wrong way by people that actually struggle with, with actual addictions. And so, you know, I'm always thinking about these ideas and noodling them. And then I'm also thinking about, well, how could this be received? Um, you know, could someone see it in a negative light? And so that's why, you know, I noodle these things and then sometimes don't do them. And then sometimes I will do them, but we'll, we'll see what happens with that one. But a lot of good stuff. In, in the news lately. And I think one of the big ones is probably the shimmering Batman. <laughs> the shimmering on the shiny Batman, the glass Batman, the unicorn by Batman. I don't know what, I don't know what you want to, which, how you want to call it. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of people that are making a lot of comments about uh, Robert or Rob uh, Pattinson. Pattinson. I think that's how you say his last name. Pattinson, Rob, Big Rob. People don't really care for Big Rob. So it was rumored earlier this week that the director, I think it was a director or the producer had actually selected, uh, someone said it's a passion. That's what's up. Collect those six says, dude, let it ride. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I don't think that a lot of people were, um, were excited were excited about the selection, the possible selection of Rob, because I don't know that it's been confirmed, right? There were, there have been rumors that have circulated, uh, early on and then they went away and now they've come back. And, and now that the rumors are really starting to, to swirl, a lot of people, um, don't think that it's a good selection, right? And again, this is all speculation. I don't think that any of it's been confirmed. And if it has been, then, um, then, then correct me, right? <laughs> Chris Bigger says, Batman does not sparkle in the sun. <laughs> Cody Jones says the same thing happened with Ben Affleck and well said, and what happened with Ben Affleck? He, I think he killed it. So people are, uh, not very excited about Rob, about the shimmering, sparkling Batman, right? Um, but here's the thing. I think he's a perfect Batman. I'll, I'll say it right now. I think that he, Rob Pattinson, is a perfect Batman. And I'm going to attempt to explain why. And I just realized one of the things that I was going to pull up for you, I didn't have it pulled up and I don't think I'll be able to find it. But I want to I want to talk about Rob and I want to talk about why I believe that he is going to be a perfect Batman. There are a lot of people out there that are very concerned in the comic book community about the the age of the population about the age of the average comic book collector people say that it is skewing towards the old or the older and people are very concerned about the future of the the hobby right because they say that they don't see younger people in comic book shops and things like that and maybe there's some validity to that right maybe there is you know an acknowledgement that a lot of people are actually reading comics digitally and they don't therefore need to come into the comic shop um, but but let's just say that there is something there, right? Um, Mushir says uh, Rob Pattinson is more of a villain than a hero. P possibly, possibly. Let, let's dig into this. Let's dig into it. So as long as you can keep the, the bat flick suit as the model moving forward. Yeah. So um, so I, I think that, you know, people are, um, you know, upset that are worried that the comic book market will essentially age out, right? That it'll become like stamps or coins or something like currency where people are much older. Um, but that's part of the reason why I think that Rob is actually a good choice. I think that Rob is a good choice partly because of his age, right? If you look at what the MCU has done, the MCU has killed it. There's no doubt about that. $22 million and billions and billions of dollars that they've brought in, but their average age of an actor is really high, right? Most of the leading men are in their late 40s, mid 40s to late 40s. I mean, you know, I'm in the early 40s, but still you you have even the the leading men in the MCU skewing towards the older, right? And so what they are trying to do, at least my perception of what they are trying to do with Rob is that they are trying to, with DC at least, um, pull things to the younger generation. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Rob is 33. Rob is 33 years of age. When he did the last Twilight, he was 22 years of age. I think that was in 2012. He was 22 years of age. And so I think that if, if people are concerned about the comic book uh, community aging out, then having movies, which appeals to the broader range of people that are out there where you have a younger actor might not necessarily be a bad thing, right? Because it is this generation's Batman, right? Not my generation per se, right? But, but this generation's Batman, they may actually resonate 
resonate with, oh, Tina Cranston says, uh, Reggie is Batman, sign me up. Well, I don't think they're ready for a black Batman, but whatever. Um, but but the dude is 33 years old, right? And if you think about it, he let's let's look at some of his stuff that he was they that they took ticked off for him. So I did some research on this thing, right? This, this guy was uh like hottest actor of 2018, heartthrob actor of 2008, like all of these crazy, crazy accolades. And and what it's signaling is that people dig this dude, right? If you think about these people that might have been in their teens, tweens, early 20s, when this dude was doing Twilight from 2008 until 2012, you have a lot of people that, a lot of women, a lot of younger people that think that this dude is really attractive, think that this dude is really cool, right? And to have this guy play Batman, I don't think that that's not a bad thing. Batman started at 25, so usefulness is fine. There you go. Big Will is speaking to it. There you go. So I think that there is something, I think there is something to this age thing, right? This this guy, a lot of people don't care for him because he played Edward in Twilight, but the guy has also been in a ton of other movies. I want to pop this screen open so I can actually show you guys some of this stuff. Because what I'm trying to do here is to essentially make my case for why I think that this is not a bad choice, right? That this could actually be a good choice. A lot of people don't dig this dude because they think that he just did Twilight. But if you look at these, these movies, look at this guy's resume. Look at this guy's resume of movies. I mean, he he made some movies and uh, he has some schedule for like 2020, 2021. He had one in 19, couple in 18, couple in 17, 16. I mean, the guy has quite the resume of uh, of movies here dating back to, I think his teens actually. Was, let's see where his earliest movie was, was uh, 2004. He has an unaccredited thing. Now, this guy is actually... He has uh, won 46 different awards, including awards from MTV and the People's Choice Awards, and then also 24 different nominations for his acting. And so I, I think that you know people are giving him um, a raw deal because of what he did in, in, in Twilight, but he's been in a lot of movies. He's won a lot of awards. And in fact, I think it was Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton only has 10 more award wins than does Rob. And Rob is actually significantly younger than Michael Keaton. I think they have the same number almost of nominations, but I believe that uh, there there's only 10 uh, award wins between Michael Keaton, who I thought was a fantastic Batman, and Rob Pattinson. A um, couple of other things here that I wanted to kind of take off for you guys is uh, when you talk about the ability to make money, talk about the ability to make money couple of people here. I'm going to give Rob a chance. There you go. One wolf gun is saying, give him a chance. The guy can make money. His five movies, technically, I don't know if they're his movies, but the movies that he were, he was in for Twilight, the five of them grossed $3.3 .3 billion. At least that's again, to, uh, according to like Mojo or whatever I looked up, it was like $3.3 .3 billion worldwide. That's a ton of money. And then you can probably like gross that up, right? If you include like DVD sales, cable sales, um, TV shows, merchandise, Dice, all that kind of stuff. I mean, 3.3 .3 billion worldwide just off of tickets. That's significant. I mean, that's that's real money. Somebody says he should play Major X. <laughs> so I, I thought uh, that that was part of it, right? The age thing I think is is good. Um, I was concerned like maybe he's too slight of build, right? Because you want Batman to be a, a tough guy, right? So I did a little research on that and come to find out he is not the shortest. He is also not the tallest person that has played Batman. Batman. He is actually 33. I think I said that he is also six foot one. I don't think I realized how tall he was. He's actually six one. Michael Keaton, my Batman is only five nine. Didn't realize that Michael Keaton was actually that small. Val Kilmer at six feet. Ben Affleck is the biggest at six four. Adam West, the uh, the classic, classic Batman is 6'2", Christian Bale, 6 feet, George Clooney, 5'11". So again, the guy, I don't know how much he weighs. I wasn't able to find that out, but at least he has the height, if you will, to be a, uh, a Batman. And I think he is also an attractive guy, right? So I think that that's also something that goes or bodes well for, for uh, Bruce Wayne, right? He has to be uh, charismatic. He has to be attractive. He has to be a heartthrob. And I think this guy, I mean, again, he fits the bill. So 
you know, my hope is that folks actually give this guy a try or a chance because I, I think that there is something there. He says, sick Captain Crunch says, 6'3 with the hairdo. Yeah, bro. He is known for bushy eyebrows and uh, that that pump hair. <laughs> IMJ says, Rob better start doing farmer's carries and drinking carnivore mass for this role. I'm pretty sure he'll bulk up. I'm pretty sure he'll put on some size. They'll put him They'll put him on a regimen. They'll give him a, a trainer or something like that. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll put on some size. Uh, RJ Taylor says, Christian Bale was 31 when he started the night dark night trilogy very good yeah the goat of collecting says reggie help him bulk up brother i'm bulking in the wrong ways i'm working on my dad bod right now someone says he's 165 pounds wow truth be told first time i stepped on stage as an amateur bodybuilder uh dry to the bone dry shredded as all get out i look like i look like an anatomy chart i was a i was i'm six feet i was 165 pounds <laughs> I overdieted. it. I over it. My last competitive year stepping on stage, I was 196, 196 dry to the bone on stage. So it is possible for this guy to put on this kind of size that he's going to need, especially because I think he probably is going to have a, a little bit of time to do it. Right. So, um, I think, I think it could happen. Uh, -huh. <laughs> Chris Barrett says, my God, I could compete with Michael Keaton. He was a small man. I mean, he's five, nine. He's, he is slight of build. I did not realize just how, how short he was. Um, but yeah, it's all good. Someone said, Chris Baker says, I'd love to see red hood in the movies one day. You might get your wish. Um, Cape and cow. We, we, again, we shall see what happens with some of this stuff. I am, I am hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> I am hopeful that he is going to make an awesome Batman. You guys know me. I am always uh, trying to look at things in a slightly different light. And that's what this was, was, you know, let's, let's look at this guy. Let's look at who he is as an individual. Let's look at his physical characteristics. Let's look at, you know, his track record of success. And uh, let, let's see whether, you know, there is something there at the end of the day. Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, if they do it right, this is going to be a very good movie. I mean, this is the year of the bat. This is the 80th anniversary. I mean, this is a big deal. This is a big deal what they're doing right now. And it's interesting because they released the teaser uh, for bat, uh, Batwoman, the trailer for Batwoman, and then uh, basically leaked or announced the uh, uh, Rob as the new Batman all within like a couple of days. So it was kind of fascinating what the, what they are doing. They are not messing around with, with the Batman right now. So all right. So, um, Jensen says he wants to play red hood. Somebody call Sony and tell them that they have a backup Spider-Man in me. <laughs> oh man. You did not miss the giveaway clay. We have not even gotten into it yet. Uh, we are sitting here having a conversation around Rob, why Rob Pattinson is the perfect Batman. Oh, the one thing that I forgot, I actually pulled up, um, because I wanted to look at like demographics and I wanted to see who was actually going to the movies. And I had this wonderful chart all pulled up for you guys, ready to rock. And basically what it showed was that the 18 to, I think it was like 39, there are two big segments. It was like 18 to 24 and then like 25 to 39 or something like that. Those two segments are the segments that are going to the movie, movies the most. And they have been for from, I think it's about 2012, which is when Twilight ended, all the way through 2016. That was the most recent data that I was able to find. And basically what it was saying was that, and I think it was the the the, the older group, the, the 24 to 39 or 25 to 39 group was the group that goes to the movies the most. And again, Rob is 33, right? If you look at when he started at, you know, kind of with the Twilight thing in 2012, he finished with that. Um, this, this is a sweet spot. This is a sweet spot. I have a feeling somebody was looking at some demographic information and making some informed decisions as to who was selected based upon some of this data. And uh, I have a feeling, again, this is not Reggie's Batman, right? I think that this is going to be, you know, some 20 year old, right? Some 30 year old Batman. I really believe that that is going to be the case. So, all right. <laughs> Todd, I am not reading that comment. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You guys are hilarious. All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, what's going to be coming out from the channel this week. 
there was a, there was a lot of content. I've been on a, a on a tear recording and filming things like that. So we have some good stuff that is going to be coming out. I may be going live maybe once to twice this week. I haven't quite decided, um, but but it'll be at least once this week, and it probably will not be Monday. But we'll we'll do a, a midday chat or something like that at some point over the course of the week. People seem to to enjoy those, so we'll probably do that. We're gonna have a haul video. I think it's gonna be a pretty cool, cool haul, possibly featuring uh, some Jack Kirby stuff. Uh, I'm going to get into a topic that people have been asking me to get into that I've been very reluctant to talk about for, for several months, several months. I've been reluctant to talk about this. Oh, let me show this thing. <laughs> I can't, I was going to show a comment, but I don't think I can show that comment now. Uh, Rob is 33. Yeah. That's basically what I was saying is that, um, so, uh, IMJ says Rob is 33, but he is like Shia LaBeouf. I'm sensing his appeal is younger female crowd, but Affleck pulled it off well. Yeah, again, I think it'll I think it'll all be fine. Those tweens were loving this dude in 2008 to 2012. Loving this dude. And I promise you, they are going to flock to the movies. They're going to take their boyfriends along with them uh to watch it. And I can tell you, in fact, um, when I was trying to look at was, was whether there was any differences in the age demographics with gender. And there actually wasn't, right? The segments, the two segments of 18 to basically 39 go to the, the movies fairly often. Uh, the lat, the older segment goes more than the younger, um, but then it is basically a 50-50 split almost between the two genders. So um, so again, getting back to this thing, I'm going to be talking about a topic that uh, I've been putting off for quite some time, but decided I couldn't put it off anymore. Couldn't put it off anymore. So we're going to uh, we're going to talk about newsstand versus direct because people have been asking. So I'm going to dig into that one. And I'm going to do it a little bit differently than maybe some people uh, thought that I might. So it's I think it's going to be a good. One. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of a discussion in one video about what is a key. What is a key? I mean that that's actually a big thing. Tom, all the boyfriends would be jealous saying stay. <laughs> You guys are hilarious. <laughs> who do you think the villain's gonna be? I saw someone say penguin. Uh it's gonna I want to see who the villain is gonna be. Do you think it's gonna be a Joker, given that they're having a Joker movie come out, or do you think it'll be someone else like the Riddler? I'm a big fan of the Riddler from the Adam West days. I watched a lot of that stuff. Whiskey business wants to see it with you. I brother, you know I don't go to the movies. You I haven't been to the movies in forever. Uh Remind me of that question about the Silver Surfer in just a moment. Um, so we're going to get into uh, that thing around what is a key. And one of the big questions that I've been kind of contemplating is, is a key always a key, right? Is a key something that is dependent upon a dollar amount? Is Does something become a key and then does it remain a key? Um, I want It's a philosophical kind of discussion that I've been noodling for quite some time that I finally put into a video. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing you all's thoughts on keys and what is and is not a key. So I think it'll be a fun video for you guys. Uh, we're going to do a hunting video because we love doing hunting videos. So that's coming out. And then I also... Um, there is a viewer sponsored giveaway video that's going to drop this week. Uh, a viewer reached out to me and said, I want to give some stuff out via the channel. So we're going to be doing that at some point this week. So definitely stay tuned because there's some cool stuff. Again, at least one live stream this week. And then also a handful of videos that are going to be coming out over the course of the week. And then, of course, in one of those videos, we're going to be doing the giveaway. So stay tuned for all of that stuff. Someone said the Mad Hatter or the Bookworm. <laughs> Uh, one wolf gun says he got, uh, he said he had a women got to get, oh, he has to get an ASM. Uh, what is it? 110, the first appearance of the Gibbon. He wants a newsstand version of that. Uh, Danny DeVito. Dan, is Danny DeVito? I guess he is still around. He's doing commercials now. I haven't seen him in a movie in quite some time. Um, I guess a couple of people gave me thumbs down. So I guess people don't like, uh, Robert Pattinson as the Batman. So. <laughs> Oh man. So Nathan McCall, very good. Nathan McCall makes a point here that he personally could not care less about direct versus newsstand. A lot of people disagree with that, but I sort of agree with you, Nathan. I definitely agree. Party time is in the house. It's a party y'all. Um, 
So yeah, there's um there's definitely some thoughts around the whole newsstand thing. Um, a lot of thoughts around the newsstand versus direct, and a lot of people are just confused about it. So I want to provide a little bit of context around uh, what what makes newsstands possibly important and why people care, and then I also give my personal perspective on newsstands. So again, stay tuned to some of that stuff. Um, oh, James Galapagos or Galagos says uh, Jerry Seinfeld could pull off the Riddler. He could. That would be a fun one. That would actually be a fun when Jerry Seinfeld, has he been in anything lately? I don't know that I've seen him. I mean, I guess he's like a billionaire, right? So I don't think he actually has to work, but that would actually be a good choice. That would be a good choice. Nathan McCall from a collector's perspective is about distribution numbers, but also going to be a nostalgic thing because we don't see newsstands much anymore. And again, the question is, it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get into that one. I'm not going to get into that one. I'm going to let you guys, uh, I'm going I'm to wait for the video to drop and then let's go ham on that one. Ooh, Jim Carrey. Bring back Jim Carrey for the Riddler. I can see that too. It's going to be interesting, um, but it, I don't think anyone said that they would see uh, the Joker popping in. So it sounds like it may be a, uh, it may be a different cast of characters. The or the origins and the key players that brought the direct edition to comics versus newsstand was quite increasing and groundbreaking to the hobby. Love the directs, especially when it has the Spider-Man silhouette. Yep, yep, good stuff, good stuff. Um, <laughs> oh wait a minute, hold on. So Jerry Seinfeld has a new show where he gets coffee with famous people. Yeah, that that is, but it's not a sitcom. It's not a sitcom. It's a show, but not a sitcom. Got it? I because I don't think I've seen him in anything. But that's cool though. All right. So um again, a lot of cool videos coming out. The newsstand versus direct. When that one drop is it drops, I'm looking forward to reading the comments on that because people have sometimes strong feelings towards one versus the other. And uh it'll be interesting to see. And you know, one of the big questions is, you know, do you see a distinction distinction between the two and do you uh, assign in a different dollar value? or different amount to those two books. That, that, that's the other part is, is it important? And if it is important, would you pay more for a newsstand versus direct? And that's kind of like part of the, the whole discussion. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that one. All right, so let's do this giveaway. We're gonna be giving away a cool book. Uh, this this giveaway, like, mm, like all the giveaways that we do on uh, Sundays are actually sponsored by Go Collect. So this week, thanks to Go Collect, we are giving away this thing right here, John Burns, Next Men, number 21. And this is um, a 9.6 white pages. This is is actually the first full color appearance of Hellboy. And to enter this giveaway, all you had to do was, I think, watch a live stream that I did this week. Watch a live stream. You clicked on the link on the community tab, and then you had to enter the word faith. And in the word faith to be randomized. And so I put up earlier today the list of those individuals that uh, completed that task. And uh, we're going to look at that first as I try to share my screen with you guys so that you can see exactly what I am looking at. So we're gonna share this thing. So here is the list of individuals that entered this week's giveaway. They basically went to that community tab, they found that MailChimp link, and they entered the word faith. These are the individuals, and I think, I don't know how many people, it was fewer than a 155, or I'm sorry, 150, I wanna say. So here are the individuals that entered this week's giveaway. It was a smaller number of people this week than last week. And I think that was just related to the, the type of book that we were giving away. But the idea is to try to appeal to different types of people with different types of books. So I don't necessarily take that as a uh, as a slight. So that is the list of individuals that entered this week. We are going to uh, roll two dice here and see what we get. We have eight. So we're going to randomize our list a total of eight times. And then we are going to declare our winner. So scrolling down, here's the first, here's the second, the third, four, five, six, seven. And the winner of this week's Go Collect giveaway is... 
Mike R. Mike R, you are the winner of this week's giveaway. Chris Barrett, so close in second place. Ghost Host Memories in third place. But the, the win, the W goes to Mike R. Congratulations, Mike R, on your win. Make sure that you send me an email to reggiecollects at gmail.com so that I can get this book sent out to you uh, just as soon as I can. And we're going to bring this thing back here. You can see here here is the book that we're going to be giving away or that mike r just won this is uh the john byrne next men 21 first full color appearance of hellboy and uh mike r you are also the recipient of an extra large go collect t-shirt this is the very last go collect t-shirt that i have i reached out to the folks at go collect and i think they are going to work on changing the design potentially for the future so for the foreseeable future we will not have any more t-shirts to give away this is the last one and mike r i hope that you can fit an extra large because that is the last shirt that we have and then you will also get a copy of this right here Maybe not this one because there's a piece of tape on it. This is the Go Collect exclusive variant. Um, it is a uh, Michael Turner exclusive variant, number one Soul Fire exclusive. So that will be coming your way. Mike R, send me an email to reggiecollects at gmail.com. I need to know your government name, your screen name, and your mailing address, and I will get this book sent out to you just as soon as I can. Mike R is here in the room, and he says, thank you. I need an extra large. So you, my friend, are the big winner this week. Congratulations to you for that. There you go. <laughs> Mushir says, Chris Barrett, you're getting closer and closer. <laughs> Last place does not get a booby prize. Last place does not get a no prize. Look, not, they, they get nothing. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> Do the other participants get a participation trophy? No, you don't even get the white ribbon that they used to give back in the day. Nothing, none of that. So uh, <laughs> congratulations, Mike R. And again, a uh, huge shout out to Go Collect for continuing to sponsor these giveaways. Um, we also have, uh, we're going to be announcing, I think it's on Wednesday, the winner of the additional contest that Go Collect sponsored. They actually, I was selling to books um, and I sold, I think it was a New Mutants, uh, what was it? New Mutants 98, 9.8 white pages. And they posted a comment, Reggie, we will buy it if you give it away to a subscriber. So we're actually going to be giving away a new Mutants 98, 9.8 white pages uh, on Instagram on Wednesday of this week. It is a Instagram only contest. Um, so if you are not yet subscribed to me on Instagram, you definitely want to do that and enter the contest. It runs through uh, Wednesday morning, I do believe. And I think someone was asking about my Silver Surfer books back there. I actually can't even see that far, but give me one sec. All right. Someone was asking about the Silver Surfer books. So this is uh, Silver Surfer Volume 3, number 1, 9.6 white pages. Uh, this is the origin of the Silver Surfer retold. So that's the significance of that one. And then this one right here is Silver Surfer Volume 3, number 44, first appearance of the Infinity Gauntlet, 9.4 white pages. So those are what the two Silver Surfer books are back there. So there you go. There you go. All right. So let me see if there's any more questions here. Bu, 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 bu. <laughs> Never say no to a trophy. <laughs> oh, you guys are hilarious. All right. So um, my buddy Mushir actually reached out to me and he said, Reggie, I want to send you an AOK. -okay. And he sent me a message and his message to me said, um, this AOK -okay is ready, set, go worthy. And so I, because I have a bias for action, I send him a message and I say, hey, do you want me to open this thing live on Ready, Set, Go? Or do you want a pre-recorded video? He took like a day to get back to me. I'm not blaming him, not blaming him at all, but I have a bias for action. So I unboxed it. I already filmed it. <laughs> you will never see the video because we are going to show you the books that he sent over to me now. <laughs> but he sent me this awesome, he sent me a couple of notes and a couple of really awesome books that I want to show you guys right now. So that's why this is a modified unboxing and not a real unboxing. His note to me says, overlooked books that every ASM collector should have. And what he sent me is a couple of really, really cool books. And he also extended a challenge to me as well. He sent Amazing Spider-Man number one. This is uh, the official Marvel index to the Amazing Spider-Man number one. 
uh, number two right is right here. And is this the Ramita? Yeah, this is the John Ramita cover right here. So this is the official Marvel index to Amazing Spider-Man. This is number two. And he also sent uh, number three, number five, cool book, number six, and then he sent me number seven. So as you could tell, I skipped a couple of numbers there. And so what is his rest of his notes says? He says, P.S. This is an incomplete set of nine, but I know you'll enjoy the hunt finding the missing three. Yes, sir. Indeed, I will. Because <laughs> as soon as I got it, I was like, man, now I have to get the other one. <laughs> So he sent that to me. And then that, that, that note, there was a note on there that said, open me first. He said, open me first. So then there was another note. And this, this one actually says, uh, this one is actually signed by your friendly neighborhood, East Coast ASM collector Mushir. So I'm definitely appreciative of that. And what he sent over to me is uh, he sent me Amazing Fantasy. He sent me Amazing Fantasy, guys. I am, I am extremely touched. By uh, by the wonderful, wonderful gesture uh, that Mushir has extended to me, um, this is by far the nicest AOK I have ever received, and it is a fantastic reprint of AF fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see. I see. T Vinny was like, "What?" <laughs> Mushir, brother, I bias for action. I sent you a message. I didn't hear back from you. Five minutes later, I opened it up. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. I couldn't wait. So he sent me this awesome, awesome book. And it is a it was a really nice uh, copy of Amazing Fantasy 15. It looks even better because I put it in a Mylar. So everything looks better in Mylar, but this is actually a really, really nice copy of this. So I am very, very thankful to you. And, and I apologize for breaking the rules, Monsieur. I broke the rules, brother, and I apologize for that. My bias for action got the got the best of me. So my bad. Yeah, um, Ramos, I, I, you know, I, it, it might be a 9.8 candidate. It, it might be a 9. With a press, with a press, I think that, that we can submit this as a 9.8. I think I think we can get there. This will be the highest grade on the census. I'm, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you right now. He says slab worthy. <laughs> no, brother, they're not white pages. Caleb is asking if they're white pages. No, 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 no. These are not white pages. These are exceptionally brilliant white, white pages, right? Because we have to outdo uh, CBCS with their exceptional white. <laughs> Chris Barrett says, I was waiting for the true believers to appear. Uh, IMJ says, Reggie had me going for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. And I mean, seriously, I, I say it all the time. I really do have some of the best subscribers out there. I mean, I, I really enjoy chatting with you guys all day long. And then, you know, people also send me wonderful things like this. And I really, really do appreciate all of this stuff. You know, I actually didn't even know anything about these uh, official guide, official Marvel indexes. I didn't know anything about those. So I think that that's really cool um, because it, it put me up on something that I didn't even know existed. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful for, you know, people that send me messages to say, Hey, thank you for doing this video or that video, or thank you for answering my questions. I appreciate all of this stuff. So Mushir brother, thank you very much. I absolutely appreciate you. And uh, again, I'm, I'm sorry for breaking the rules. I'll try to do better next time around. <laughs> Chris Barrett says, sell it on eBay for 150 K with those angelic white pages. Now, yeah, this is, um, see, the thing is, this is better than direct or newsstand, right? This is, this is, this was like hand delivered, not for resale. This is like hand delivered printers proof kind of stuff right here. That's what this one is. Who is this? IMJ says, I need, uh, an Iron Man volume one, 227 CC, CGC to 9.8 Been having a hard time finding a 9.8 contender. And now he just wants to buy one. What's 227? Is that, is that the, um, is that the white ghost? Is that the white ghost there? I don't know. Uh, I don't know Iron Man all that well. Uh, Tracy is best. Tracy is best. How you doing, brother? He said, I thought it was, it was, there was an AF 15 facsimile copy out. Thought I missed it. Um, Chris Bigger says, thank you, brother. I definitely appreciate that. I appreciate that. Stan Lee gave it broom. There you go. Stan Lee gave it to Mushir. Mushir gave it to Reggie. How about that? <laughs> armor wars all right cool um is i think that's it i think that's it i think that's all that i wanted to go oh you know what? i do want to say thank you 
I uh, I don't really sell books all that often, um, but I got a bunch of those slabs back from CGC like what two weeks ago, something like that. And and ever since then, I you know I've been on a little tear where I've decided to start selling some things. I had a bunch of doubles of Amazing Spider Man, and um, I started I started putting a couple of books up on Instagram, and then all of a sudden, like everything I put up someone bought. And so I put up more stuff and that stuff sold out. And so I've been on a little tear. It's actually, uh, quite, quite fun to sell, to sell books. So, uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone, uh, who watches the channel, who also bought some things from me. Uh, I definitely appreciate you guys. I've mailed most of the stuff out and there's a huge stack of things that are actually going to be going out uh, on Monday as soon as I can get to the post office. And then everyone that participated in Trivia Night, we did Trivia Night. Uh, shout out to Vika for sponsoring that. That happened yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, around one o'clock. We had a, a handful of people come out and do Trivia Night. I think people had fun. Uh, all of those uh, giveaways have all been uh, packaged up. They are sitting on the countertop and they will also all be mailed out to everyone. So, um, the goat of collecting Reggie, what's up? What you need? What you need? What you need? Um, thank you, Tina. I definitely appreciate that. Uh, Oh, Whoa. See Wayne, Wayne McDonald trying to tempt me. Wayne McDonald trying to tempt me. My Canadian brother, my fellow, uh, cue ball trying to tempt me says someone has a raffle on Instagram for an AF 15 and a 5.5, 12 spots for 5k per spot. Hmm. Mm, that is bananas. I am not the one for that. <laughs> I am not the one for that. That is so risky. I, I actually did a um I did a uh a, a, a New Year's resolution video at the beginning of this year. And one of the things that I basically swore off was I swore off raffles. I did a couple of them last year and I won like a mini and I was like, oh, that's cool. Then I went to the major or, or the main or whatever and just got dusted. I just, I can't do them. I can't do them. But I, I promise you someone is going, well, 12 someones are probably going to drop five grand to get in that raffle. And I think it's, it's not for me. That is not, uh, that is not my game. Um, Tracy is basket is asking what the next book is that is going to be given away. Uh, I don't know. Tracy is best. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know because the, 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 the stack of books that I purchased have not arrived yet. Um, I picked, um, I bought from a, from a, from a seller that I've purchased from before, and it took a little long to ship the things out. Um, and so I'm hopeful that those things will arrive, uh, on Monday. Um, that way I can, uh, do some, something and kind of, uh, you know, pick the book and, and go from there. Um, but I don't have the books yet, so definitely stay tuned. Um, but I think the books are pretty cool. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I went outside of my comfort zone, like with this next men 21, that Mike R one, I actually went outside of my comfort zone and picked some books that I wouldn't normally pick. Um, but, but again, it's, it's an attempt to appeal to other people that just aren't into Spider-Man like I am. So hopefully people will appreciate those when we drop them. So, um, yeah, Chris Baker says he missed trivia night. We'll do it again. We're doing it now. We are basically signed up to do trivia night, uh, every single month. Um, I was in the process of looking for uh, a more official sponsor. Vika is doing a fantastic job as a subscriber of the channel. But uh, we've been talking with different companies, trying to find a sponsor to sponsor it and uh, can't work out some the terms that make sense. And so thankfully, Vika has continued to um, to volunteer to sponsor Trivia Night. So we're going to continue doing that. Um, so stay tuned for next month and we'll, we'll decide whether we do it, uh, like midday or something like that. Cause the goal again is to try to get people to participate. And we had a smaller turnout for the midday, uh, that than we normally would for a nighttime. But I think the people that were there were slightly different. And so the goal is again, try to spread the love with some of the things that we're doing. Um, and Todd is asking whether the 5k is American or Canadian. <laughs> Caleb, that deep V. I think, Caleb, did you win the deep V? The deep V with the shorty shorts. It is coming your way. Sully to King says that that raffle is a huge risk. Wayne McDonald says he would never do a raffle. Uh, what was this? IMJ had a comment. It got away from me. It got away from me, dude. Sorry about that. Uh, these things, some guy bought four spots. That is bananas. That is bananas. 5K per raffle spot. You go to Vegas and put it all on red. Better chance of winning. Man, that is crazy. 
Um, IMJ says, I'm with Reggie. I don't gamble like that. Better off trading a bro. I was so I almost bought a 0.5 the other day. Can't even lie to you. Almost bought a 0.5 the other day. Uh, and I was like, uh, low grade better than no grade. <laughs> Oh man, I came close to pulling the trigger on it. <laughs> oh, do, um, Dragon Do. So I heard about this. What was the announcement about the um about Spawn three hundred? I I didn't think that that was coming out. I didn't think that was coming out yet. I thought it was coming out later this week. Um, what did he what did he announce? <laughs> Chris Baird says I am Spawn. I'm, I'm curious what he announced. Because I, I, someone sent me, again, that's what I was talking about. People send me information, which I definitely appreciate. And someone mentioned something about big spawn announcement. Oh, no. It says live Sunday at 7. I assumed it was next Sunday. Um, 20K with three chances. Eternals are hot right now. Trade your eternal slab and rise zero towards it. Come out ahead. Nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Trust me, I've been selling a lot of books. And uh you know, I sell things that I'm not uh, not really interested in, you know, by and large. And um, the Eternals, I'm, that is a long term play for me. The ride, I can probably let go of that. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Billy Kincaid back. All right. So here we go. I'm actually going to jump out of here, go to try to uh, figure out what Todd was talking about, because now I'm curious what he was talking about. I want to thank you guys for spending a little bit of time with me today. Again, some fantastic content that's going to be coming out this week, Monday through Friday, always at 3.30. We'll probably do a live stream midday or so. My hope is that you guys can join me for that. Uh, and then we'll also at some point be you know, telling you guys what the Go Collect giveaway is. So definitely stay tuned for the various videos that are going to be given, you know, released from the channel. A couple of giveaways this week. So stay tuned. I want to thank you guys for hanging out. And certainly if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so. Reggie Collects on Instagram and ReggieCollects at gmail.com. Congratulations again to Mike R for his win. And Mike, I just saw your email come through. So I'm going to box your stuff up right now and I will send you a tracking number.